Yo, what is up guys? So a lot of you guys actually asked me to do this when I had mentioned that we won the Major. So today we're going to be going over the final game of the RLCS X Major. This was the game to win it all. This was game 6, so we ended up winning the series 4-2. to two. I'm going to be going over the little things. You're going to see examples of like the nerves you might experience when it comes down to a Major Final or a huge tournament like this. Something that means so much uh, for the whole season. The nerves that you'll see throughout it and it's all pretty natural stuff that'll happen you'll definitely be able to see examples of like the nerves coming into play on, on some mistakes here and there even from me someone who's played for a very long time people like garrett everyone makes mistakes in a situation like this it comes down to who can make the least of them uh but yeah when you get into it i'm gonna try to explain the situations and my thought process the best i can i'll try to stay on my pov um but yeah that's pretty much it we ended up uh, a little bit backstory guys this is actually the second series so this was a double elimination bracket uh, so how that works is if you lose once, you drop down to the lower bracket and you can fight your way back up. But you have to win two series in the grand finals if you lost early. If you didn't lose early, you have two lives when it comes down to the grand finals. So we didn't lose early. Our bracket ended up looking like playing against version one, which is my old team. So Gimmick, Torment, and Calm is the replacement they got for me. And um, we ended up beating them in a game five. It was actually a close game five. We actually did well to come back there. Then our second series... Uh, which ended up already being the winner semifinals was against space station we won that four to two i believe and then we played against envy to make the grand finals and we won that four to two as well um so that sent envy down to the lowers and that sent ssg down to the lowers as well so since rogue actually had lost first round and their side of the bracket they dropped down to play g2 who also lost first round they ended up beating g2 game five they swept the peeps who's a top five team they swept space station gaming who we actually beat in the upper bracket like i said they also swept envy so they went 12 and 0 they went 12 and 0 to make the grand finals they lose a single game on championship sunday they were looking like a very very tough opponent we came in first series and we won a game i think the second game we actually took a game right away so that was huge to stop the momentum because they're coming off a 12 game win streak winning two 4 -0 sweeps over the other two top teams in north america so they're absolutely destroying the opponents today on this day they were playing insanely well first killer especially looking like the best player in a lot of the series he played but yeah this is going to be the last game of the second bracket so we ended up losing the first bracket uh game seven by one goal and it went down to the second series where we had to fight all the way down to this game six ot like i said the reason why we had two lives and they beat us once but we were able to still win the tournament is because we had not lost early on in the tournament they lost first day of the tournament we had not lost, so we made it to the end with an extra life. We lost our extra life, so we're on the same level as them at that point, both having one loss, and it came down to this final series. Whoever wins this takes it all, and whoever loses goes home. So, to get into the game, no more talking. Just wanted to explain how that works for you guys that don't understand how double limb works and how we got to this point. Um, but yeah, this team played extremely well to get to here, like I said, beating the other two top teams in North America by a mile. They look by far the best team in those series. So, let's get into this last game, and there will be mistakes here and there, but it's natural. And uh, it's nothing to be ashamed of, and you learn a lot from mistakes, especially in a big, close series like this. So let's uh, get straight into the game. So on kickoff, going to have Garrett going for this one. Shut off the bat, always turn toward net. If you're someone who goes for back boost on kickoff like that, always turn toward net. Right here, it looks like I miss, but I'm jumping for this ball. I would have this. My touch would be intended to go off the back wall. But I see Garrett on my left side, and I see no one on my right side. Justin calls that he has this, so that's my cue to leave it. I stop boosting immediately. As soon as he calls it, he's back wall. Gets a good clear downfield. And I still have full boost now in this situation. So because I didn't go for that ball, I have full boost. The ball is downfield. My team's actually in a much better position now because I let Justin go for this. That's how good like communication can be in a situation like that. Get us in a better position straight off the bat. I'm just kind of killing time there. I know that ball is not going to lead to anything crazy, but... It's not always about scoring in threes. A lot of the time it's about hitting the ball in an awkward spot for the other team. Especially if you're on your side still. You're not going to get a shot across the field that goes straight in. A lot of the time you're just trying to make it awkward for the opponent. Touch from Justin. So here, I have two options. And in this situation, I know shooting is never really going to be a goal. But there is a chance to get a bad save to the right side. I know Garrett's somewhere toward my right. I don't know exactly where, but I know he's somewhere to my right. So if I get a shot that makes them make a mistake here, that's best case scenario. I could also try to pass this like straight across, but I do see first kill underneath me. His pathing probably ends up going right toward where this pass would end up. It's kind of right in front of where Garrett is. So if the pass comes down to where Garrett is, it gets cut off by first. And first probably has a little bit of boost here. 31. Yeah. You could definitely get in the way with this way of this if I pass. So 
it's a good idea for me not to pass that and i was kind of aware that first would probably had a touch on that so good idea just to shoot and again if they get a bad save on this even just this touch was good because look at turn look at the position he's in actually doesn't end up very good for him he's landing in front of the ball here first killer has to go for the straight away he's gonna dunk his own teammate so it's actually good for us as you see we kind of we end up on top there we end up with the ball out of all this i still end up getting back to and getting possession that was a good play it was a good shot to make that one decision for me that micro decision ended up working out much better because had i passed that and it got cut out it would have been really bad it's a good touch from turn it kills a lot of time this is a mistake from me here so i actually misread this i thought this was gonna go out more and i was trying to pass to the right side where i think justin was yeah so i was trying to pass downfield to the right side i thought i was gonna come out uh down this way off the bounce and i was gonna be able to pass to justin but i didn't so i had to react last second and flip toward the ball try to stay on that's a good 50 actually not bad at all get wins the next challenge so a good set of challenge wins there first is doing this all weekend long catching these awkward balls in his corner and just flicking over one it's good to an extent and he's a fast player so he can get by a second as you can see he got by another just me there i could have waited and been a little bit more patient especially since i was lost back but that's kind of what first is really good at you can't be too mad at yourself for a mistake like this especially because it did make him throw the ball away and garrett's gonna have an, a little bit of an easier time dealing with this ball now he didn't have a lot of options by that time it was well played by garrett good boom from garrett i had to get pads here just went for a double so it gave me some time not a bad idea so i was going for a bump on the back wall guy trying to bump first off the ball not give him a chance to hit it, but end up getting bumped off of it myself. Good bang from Gary. Good follow from Justin. I go back wall just in case Justin gets beat. Both my teammates committed for the fifth there, so I have to be a little bit patient on this. I'm not going to dive on it. I know he's just trying to beat me. That's really well played from us. We can get another 50 on this. So this is like one of those mistakes that happen in these like high pressure moments. Garrett thought that maybe he can take this ball and hit it around Sirocco from his perspective, probably. Or like win a 50, but he probably should have just left it, obviously, because I'm in front of him and I have a pretty clear 50 on the ball. If he waits, Justin probably has a, a free touch downfield. Garrett will be back in a safe position, then it wouldn't be any really risk. There wouldn't really be any risk to it in that situation, but it, it's, it's a thing that happens quite often, to be honest, and you can't be too, like, super over analyzing about something like that. It's a very small mistake, and there's much worse that can happen. Trust me, it's not a bad thing at all. Justin's up for this though, and first is up for a touch. And first he knows that Justin's lost back here, so I bet you he's just aiming for a beat. He is. He's aiming for a beat off the ceiling, and Justin, smartly so, hits it around them. It doesn't go for anything too crazy. Hits it over to me. Actually gives me a lot of time on the ball here. And honestly, if I assessed the situation better and took a little bit more time, I could have dribbled. Although Turco would probably go for a demo on me here, I could have just dribbled it. But it's fine. It's not bad because, again... Puts pressure on them, and look how bad this takeoff from Turinturo is. You can tell straight off the bat. I think I called this really early that he missed, because I can tell from his his path where the ball is going to be bad. And he missed. We didn't get a goal out of it, but it was a good try. And it caused a lot of pressure on them, because Justin gets another shot straight off the bat. Sorry if I'm pausing a lot, guys. I want to just cover as much as I can. So in this situation, first hits is toward the wall. I got a good first touch to control. I'm not just going to hit one hit middle, because Taroko's watching. I can see him watching it. So I tell Garrett to wait. I actually, if you guys watched the comms video, the energy release, uh, which I can link down below. Um, I actually tell Garrett to wait here. I don't want him to jump and make two of us get out of the play. So I try to take this myself and just get a 50-50 that goes over Taroko's head. So I force out the player that would have been middle to cut out the pass. And it now gives Garrett a free ball. So ultimately, it does the same thing. We get the ball, except there's no threat of it being cut out. And now we're going to have full boost waiting behind as well. Very good demo from Garrett. They're very good, like, micro decisions so far. Like, very small decisions that are making a big difference. Yeah, first it's trying to control a lot out of his corner, what he was doing the whole weekend. And he's a very good once player, so you know he's going to get by one or two players almost every time he does that. So it's a smart thing. Again, this might look bad. You don't understand how threes works, but I know one's up for this. I know another one's up for this. And I see first to my left. So my whole goal here is to block more of the left side of the ball and just try to go and make him do something. I make him do something here. I also get the bump on him, which stops any chance of him getting a double on this. And now my team has a free ball, and we know two of them are committed to this play. Justin can pass me on the wall, and he gets dunked, which is a little bit unfortunate, but Garrett still gets the ball in the end. If I get the bump here, it's a goal. Couldn't quite, though. Really well played from first. Very smart. But it's okay. Don't get it twisted. Getting beat on a ball like I got beat to back there is not bad at all if you're first man, and you're giving your team a free ball. So never be afraid to look dumb and get beat if it's not a risky situation to get beat in. That's a little bit unlucky. 
So here it might look weird, but I was going for a demo on first, because again, you don't want to leave. I see the situation, I see Turok on the left, I don't want to leave him a chance to pass. So I'm trying to demo in a way where it's not going to give him a chance to get to the right side of the ball. And in doing that, when Justin challenges, this actually hits into me, which is a little bit unlucky. But I was able to get a good touch. So again, make them have to get an awkward touch. It's a lot of trying to make the other team just not feel comfortable. Good job to turn around control here. Try to control it out of my side. Get another 50 middle. It's a very smart 50. As long as we don't hit that too far toward the opponent, we're good there. It's unlucky. I remember this goal. This is slightly unlucky. Eh? So Garrett actually had pretty much everything blocked. I just got by him. The Garrett's POV. Actually, like, pretty good pre flip to get there. It just hit, like, the much, much more favorable part of the ball. For Soroko, so a little bit unfortunate, but you can't be upset about something like that. It's a 50-50 goal, and if you look at the scoreboard so far in this game, you can see that they only have one shot. We already have five shots, and it felt like we had almost all the pressure. So that's something that I had actually brought up again in between that goal. Like, don't worry about it. We got this. They've only gotten one shot so far in over half the game, so we're doing much better than them so far. It's a good bump from us. Kind of like a trade bump where you both end up in the same bad position, but it wasn't bad. Good idea to pass across. Stroke is in an awkward spot. It creates a lot of pressure on him. I'm adjusting to go alone here because I didn't have much boost. But once I saw it was coming toward me, just hit it off the wall in an awkward spot yet again. Kind of what I like to do quite a bit. Just hit it in a weird spot. Make things awkward. Hit it off the wall again for my team. I know I can't shoot off that, but I know someone's middle. And these are actually really good passes. Even at high level, it might look weird. But these are really good passes. Like super hard to read for them because I can't tell if it's a pinch across. And Justin actually probably would have scored this if Turoko didn't get such a good block. That was a really, really good block. Well, well timed from him. Good job from us to just keep this in play here. Garrett tried to shoot off this. I think it just hits into me. Would have been a really good shot. Me just turning there forces that touch to the side. My presence alone. Often going to be enough. Any player turning just to keep pressure like that is always going to be enough. That's a really good touch from first. So this is... Calms again. I'm turning toward this ball. I'm about to just shoot this on net. Shooting wouldn't really do much because the answer goes in goal. But it would cause a bad touch. Probably to the right side again. Then Garrett can follow it up and keep pressure like that. But Garrett calls me off. I let him have it. He has a double. Could be a shot. If he gets this angle, it's a goal. First killer is falling from up there. Turco's up. So you know he beats Turco here. I didn't actually pay attention to the fact that first killer landed back wall. So he lands really quick, recovers, and gets the beat on me. Now I'm stuck with no boost. A little bit because I committed to that ball, which I probably shouldn't have done, but it's hard to know the first kill is going to land there. Good first touch again. I was doing this all game really well. First touch is on the wall to control. Kill a lot of time. You're killing about four or five seconds every time I do that. You don't want to kill time when you have a uh, goal disadvantage, but it's not a bad idea to do that to let your team get boost. Um, so we get a goal to this in situation. Go back here again. All right, first touch of control, good pre flip. Got a good air dribble. Justin was middle. And he ended up doing kind of the same thing. He hit it up the wall to himself. Got a good pre-flip touch. Turn did not make a touch he wanted. Probably low boost because he had a lot of pressure. Yeah, he had zero. A zero boost because all the pressure we had. He was the man that needed to make the touch. And Garrett was ready. Just lurking. As well played from Garrett. 48 seconds left. Tied 1-1. This point is probably going to come down to one big mistake. It's what you're probably thinking. And I actually probably could have scored this. This is a tough shot to get. Especially in the moment because I didn't expect it to be open, to be honest. I missed time I flipped by literally like a half second, probably. And it would have been a skim and just straight in. If you look at this angle. Actually, it looks like it's going to go in, right? But it's just too slow. So I missed time I flip by probably like less than a half a second, and it would have been a goal. Would have been the, the winner probably of the whole major. But it happens. I just got to rotate back, regain. It's going to be quite a few close misses at the end of this game, guys. And uh, one of them was one of them from me actually really upset me in the moment, but you can't think about that. That's a good block from us. Again, good transition play. I know I can't really shoot that. They're both waiting ground. They're going to have a save on that. Garrett misses, so we have to just rotate back quick. Get some pads here. Play it over to Garrett's side on the wall, or Justin's side, sorry. Really good touch to control that. And a good follow up as well. Hold on. I'm Justin getting pads here again. Play this off the ceiling. 
It's zero seconds, so in this situation, I see both of the players. I saw first even pre-jump there. So I don't have to go for a shot here. Why would I go for a shot? Any backward touch is no point. If I hit this back wall, Terran Zeri is going to bang it, right? If I hit this toward net first, Zeri is going to control it. And I'm going to leave my teammate in a 1v1. So I'm going to hit it straight ceiling. There's no way they can keep it up. It's going to be OT for us to try to close it out here. Nice from Garrett. Good touch toward me for Justin. I can't follow it up though. I know that, so I just gotta wait. Again, good touches from first. Try to get something crazy. This actually would have been a really good shot. Trying to drift and double jump right here and get this ball shot into the top corner, it looks like. But look where I am, and I kind of blocked that that angle off. There's no way he could have got this ball past me. Had the whole goal angle blocked. Such a tight angle to get, right? Would have been an insane shot. You can see the idea he had. The drift shot at the end there would have been insane. Uh, be careful the mid pass. All right, this is a classic setup. Someone's air dribbling. This is what every high level team does now. Someone's air dribbling. Put a body up. Doesn't matter if it gets over me. I don't have much boost, but it's enough to at least bump them, get them out the way. And now we get two people out of the the play here for one challenge. Very good follow up challenge from Garrett. I got bumped out by flip toward the boost, which is huge because now first has to back off. There's no mid boost either, so it actually forces first to go all the way back, which is huge because he's probably the biggest threat in the day. So. Any chance we can get him off the ball is a good thing. Alright, this was actually the scariest moment of this whole game for me. Um, so I die, right? And it honestly looks like it's in my net. I'm not going to lie. The way this ball is dropping, I know I have this, obviously. But first comes out of absolutely nowhere. <laughs> Kills me. Feels like it's in my net. And then someone else dies, and the ball is just being shot. So I don't know if Justin would have had this or not. I'm not going to lie. He can't see anything. He actually can't see a thing. So if Turin shot this wall, I mean, Justin jumped really well, actually. He actually was super patient on this and timed it really well. I want to see his whole POV of this. So I'm up for this. He knows I have it, but I get killed. Looks like it's in. It's not in. Then Garrett also dies. He can't see a thing. Man, that's the scariest, scariest situation to be in. But we got out of it. We got out of it well. All because Turin... Wasn't able to slot that perfectly, but even if he did, Justin was there. Justin had the whole net blocked. Justin played that perfectly, to be honest, in that situation. Good touchdown field, and that kills a lot of time for us. Now, I bet you my whole team is able to get boost. Let's see. All right, Justin didn't get it, but Garrett did have full boost now, and Garrett is next up to challenge. So that's more than enough in that situation, to be honest. And Garrett wins the challenge too, which is going to allow me to get boost. So he did enough to get the whole team in a better position. Play the top left side. Good hit down. Give me Justin's ball. I should rotate out here. Should be Justin's ball again. That's fine. Garrett should have this across to me, most likely. Okay, I went back in net. That's fine. Actually, a safer play there to go back in net. Not stay for the pass. It's a very good pass back to Garrett there. To look for Garrett in a situation like this is huge, especially in a high pressure situation like a final like this. Very, very huge. Very, very huge. To win the whole game, those are the plays you need to look for. Those counterattacks. This is the one that if you. Look at it for face value. It looks like I just should have whiffed, which I did. But at the same time, like I should have scored this. But at the same time, in my head, I don't know how much boost turn has. So in my head, I'm trying to get above this ball because I think turn's going to be able to turn, right? It looks like turn is in net. And it looks like he's going to be able, in my opinion, like in my view, this is what I thought. I thought he's going to be able to turn here to the left and jump up and hit this to the left side. So I try to get above that, right? I try to get above the potential block. But turn actually... I watched this back, I didn't realize he had zero. So he had no boost. So this literally was a free goal. I didn't know this. So in my head, I jumped really quick to this, thinking I needed to block the guy in net. Because these guys are so... You have to understand how quick these guys are to challenge everything. So first, this is a good example. Look how quick he was to challenge Justin's first touch here. Immediately. Bumps Justin out the way, right? I just think Turner's going to be up for this every time. And he never went. So you can see I get... Baked out by the fact that he didn't go. So in my head, I made that harder than it needed to be. But he did go. It just looked like he's going to have a touch on it, right? In a situation like this, in hindsight, obviously hindsight is 2020. Like, you, I should just be going for the ball. And if it gets 50, it gets 50, right? Trying too hard to get the goal straight up here. And overthinking the fact that he might have a boost. So, you know, it is what it is. Mistakes like that happen. I had to regain super quick for this. Because something very sketchy happens in the next five seconds. 
So I thought we literally, I thought we just got scored on right here. <laughs> Not gonna lie. So Justin shoots this. So straight off that miss, I'm still in my head like, man, I should have scored that for sure. I shouldn't have expected him to hit it, right? I'm thinking like that, like, man, why did I think he was going to get there? I should have should have shot it. Now Justin shoots this. First gets a very good half flip last second save. Garrett's coming out of the net and hits toward our net. And I have to rush back to this and turn to the other side. So I'm low boost, saving all my boost here. I turn, get back to it, and I'm just killing time. Playing like I have more boost. I grab the mid and get back now. Leaving that for Garrett. Good job to just chill now. A lot of crazy stuff going on. Good speed from Justin. Another amazing save, man. They're playing really good on defense. Good pinch from us, causing a lot of pressure on them. Now, this is a very scary moment. Justin has to win this read. He has to, and he does. It's a very scary moment. And he still has control of the ball, too. Play it off the back wall. This is something that I don't want to shoot again. Me shooting this does nothing for us at all. It actually does nothing if I shoot this ball. First, it's in net. There is nothing I can shoot in this situation that'll go straight in. The only thing that can maybe go in here is if I get above this ball, maybe pass it to the right. But look at look at Garrett. He's half flipping out. If I pass it to the right, that also leaves first and it won't be one with Garrett. And I and this is all happening in comms really quick. I know that I have no pass middle. So I just go for the back wall touch. Make it as awkward as possible. I don't want to waste any boost on that as well. I just want to get back quick. Save my boost to return back. And now look, I have the ball again because of the touch I made. So if I went for a different touch, I wouldn't have had the ball. I eventually get the ball back. When a huge 50 off the air dribble, Justin gets a good touch to himself, passes down, and that's the game. All because I didn't go for a shot on that one ball. It's crazy, but this one decision actually makes the biggest difference in the grand scheme of things. The fact that I didn't go for like the selfish play of trying to score this goal and trying to be the hero in this situation is actually a game changer. Because, again, there is no shot I can shoot here that goes in. I, I know there's no shot I can shoot here that goes in. So I'm just playing that off the back wall. And it just causes so much pressure. And I could turn again here. Another good play. Not going for the shot here. I'm not trying to score. I'm just trying to play into a position where it's better for my team. I get a touch off the wall. Follow it up. I see one up. I go for the 50. I win the 50. Now it's Justin's turn to go. Slows down really well. Gets one soft touch to himself. Touches one more down around the other guy that was going to challenge. And Garrett waits patiently midfield for all of that. So Garrett's view of the entire thing. From back here. Off the 50, Justin soft touch to himself, pass down, and there's the finish. Beautiful stuff. That was played to perfection. If you go to first killer POV here, see how hard it was to actually get out of that situation. No boost, tries to go for the corner, thinks it's fine. Justin makes the perfect play, and he has to pre jump far. He has to pre jump far, and Garrett plays it in the perfect spot. And there you go. There we have it. Major champions off a very sweaty game with mistakes on both sides. But that's what happens, man. These guys are playing insane. They're playing probably the best Rock League they've ever played. And we were able to take them down. So that's a huge thing. And uh, we did a lot to adapt throughout the series. Very proud of the team. Always a fun time uh, playing and learning new things with Justin and Gary. I love, I love those dudes, man. It's honestly such a blast team with them. Such a blessing. And uh, hopefully there's many more things to come. Many more wins to come. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any other ideas and uh, any other videos you guys want to see me make in terms of like replay stuff like this or just fun videos in general, I'm down. Might have a video coming pretty soon with Musty, so look out for that. It should be a fun one. That's going to be more of a creative one. And uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Love y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, and peace.